scarred from the everyday wear and tear of carpentry. Yes, he was the Son of God, but he was also a man's man. He even told his disciples to sell their cloaks and buy swords as they set off to do his work and build his church. He was establishing for their understanding that there are things worth fighting for, even things worth dying for as men. He is our highest example of manhood, particularly in the magnificence of his courage. We should never forget how he entered the temple in Jerusalem one day. Seeing conduct that showed disregard for the honor of God, he made a braided whip and drove money changers and merchants out of the temple courts. You can bet that those who saw him do it never forgot how he flipped over tables and fiercely prevented strong young men from carrying merchandise through God's house. This is the true Jesus Christ. He was tough and rugged, but also the epitome of love and compassion. What about American men today? Most modern men do not reflect the image of the best model for genuine manhood. Society suffers as a result. For example, many men are convinced it is somehow manly to produce children, yet unmanly to take responsibility for them. This is why there are American households teeming with children, but absent a father. Consider also the domestic abuse statistics in America. What kind of degenerate thinks it's manly to beat a woman, that he is somehow affirming his superior status in the world through violence against those he is intended to protect? I could ask the same question about men who have extramarital affairs. What kind of man breaks his vows, destroys lives, and violates the laws of God for false love and brief pleasures? It must be the same kind of man who allows pornography, a kind of fictional intimacy of the imagination, to destroy genuine intimacy with a loving wife. Certainly men who do these things are not modeling themselves after the ultimate man, Jesus Christ. It is no wonder so many people are asking these days, where are all the real men? Manhood is suffering today. Men seem to be confused about what God wants them to be and about how to live out their manly calling. I often get this question from the men I meet. Are there any examples of real men that we can emulate? I answer, yes. Let me tell you about just one. My dad was a manly man who was a fine role model for my brother and me. Gerald Boykin grew up on a tobacco farm in East North Carolina as one of ten children. He was the sixth son of a sharecropper. Gerald dropped out of high school three months after his 17th birthday so he could join the United States Navy during World War II. His four older brothers were already deployed to combat zones, and Gerald refused to stay behind. He simply had to join his brothers in upholding what they all believed. Knowing my father as I do, I'm sure he also did not want to be left out of the war stories that would be told at the family gatherings in later years. His passion to serve his country like a man landed him in the middle of fierce fighting on June 6, 1944, D-Day. Gerald was severely wounded and left blind in his left eye. After his discharge from the Navy, he returned to the tobacco farm, married his sweetheart, and started a family. When the Korean War began in 1950, he returned to service in the United States Army, which had a program for disabled veterans who could still function. After the war, he was discharged a second time. Upon leaving the Army, Gerald accepted a job with the United States Marine Corps, where he served for 32 years as a federal employee. This service included a year in Vietnam and multiple deployments into dangerous areas. Gerald never expected America to give him anything but an opportunity. He served his nation with devotion all his life and raised his family to love God and to love the nation that he had so faithfully served. His sense of justice and his moral courage were his cornerstone characteristics. Gerald knew what he believed, what was important to him, and what he was unwilling to compromise. He had a servant's heart and the strength of character to stand by his convictions. He had transcendent causes in his life. They can be summarized in three words, God, country, family. Though he had little education, Gerald was a man of wisdom who took his responsibilities as a father and mentor seriously and always stood on principle. His sense of right and wrong gave him the moral compass that guided his life. He never blamed others for his own failures or shortcomings. He accepted responsibility for...